Imagine a country where car radios and growing beards is illegal, but melons and dogs are celebrated with national holidays. Turkmenistan is ruled by one of the strangest dictatorships the world has ever seen. The state has often been called the North Korea of Central Asia, and for good reason. Turkmenistan has consistently had one of the worst human rights records, and corruption is endemic. This is how Turkmenistan came to be. It's the early 90s, and what we know as modern-day Turkmenistan has risen out of the ashes of the former Turkmen Soviet Socialist Republic, or Turkmen SSR. Upon the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the former head of the Turkmen Communist Party assumed leadership. His name was Suparmurat Niyazov. Niyazov was heavily inspired by Stalin as he immediately set about developing a cult of personality to secure his power over the people. He coined himself the modest title Turkmen Bashi, or leader of all Turkmen. He built hundreds of statues of himself across the country, one of which in the capital Ashgabat was gold and rotated so it always faced the sun. Niyazov also gifted his entire population a watch with his face on. This extravagant but superficial spending of state money was set against the backdrop of poverty for the average Turkmen. It's important to mention that this isn't a poor country. Turkmenistan has the six largest natural gas reserves in the world. Poverty was not all the population were dealing with. Under Niyazov, the state cracked down on opposition, religion, movement, the media, academia. Basically, Turkmenbashi had the power to control every facet of the lives of his people. And Niyazov wasn't done yet. He also renamed the days of the week, months of the year, entire cities, and even craters on the moon after himself and his family. January was now Turkmenbashi, and September was named after a book he wrote. This book, the Runama, was a spiritual guide for the Turkmen nation, Niyazov's equivalent of Mao's Little Red Book. He made it compulsory reading in schools and universities, and in a bizarre move that shouldn't be surprising at this point, included an exam on the text as part of the Turkmen driving test. Amongst other strange laws like banning beards, makeup, and car radios, he also started a policy of neutrality. Now, this sounds weirdly virtuous from the Azov, but in reality, this policy was about increasing his power. Isolation from the world stage meant a reduced influence from any country that might want to barge in on his very private party. Turkmenbashi ruled for 21 long years and established modern-day Turkmenistan, a state rich with natural gas, a whitewashed capital crafted from marble, and a suppressed, impoverished population. It's easy to focus on the eccentricities of Niyazov's rule, but don't be fooled. This is a man that sacked 15,000 healthcare workers, closed hospitals outside the capital, and named all infectious diseases that were plaguing his population illegal. Niyazov's rule is an example of what happens when a psychopathic leader gains ultimate power. President Niyazov has died from a heart attack after 21 years in charge and his countrymen are looking for a successor. Turkmen Bashi died in power without naming a successor. However, after some well-timed political arrests, Niyazov's deputy prime minister and former dentist, Gurbanguly Berdi Mohamedov, snatched power for himself. The new president took steps to reverse Niyazov's cult of personality, like restoring normal names for the days and months and moving his rotating statue away from the centre of the capital. These were promising early signs, but Berdi Mohamedov's plan was only to replace Niyazov's cult with his own. With his power secure and the machine of the state continuing to crush all dissent, he followed in the eccentric footsteps of Niyazov. Amongst constant state corruption and human rights abuses, he sang songs on TV, like this banger. Or this one. He hit the gym, built monuments to his favourite breed of dog, giant dog statue, raced cars, became Top Gun, and shot guns whilst riding a bike. 
Amongst all this madness, the president also spent time on his succession plan, his son, Sadar. In 2022, after 15 years in charge, Berdi Mohamedov handed over the presidency, officially making Turkmenistan a dynastic dictatorship. Sadar hasn't been in power long, but one thing is obvious. His father hasn't yet sailed off into the sunset. Gurban Guli was named by his son as national leader and chairman of the People's Council. At the same time, laws were changed so that the chairman would technically outrank the president. From the outside, it looks like Sadar is still in training from his father, who holds the real power within the regime. Turkmenistan's leaders have a history of prioritizing their own desires at the expense of their population's most basic needs. They are dictators who have crushed any opposition to their rule, and to be honest, it's hard to see the regime losing its grip on power anytime soon. The state, much like North Korea, has been moulded and formed over the years to serve the ruling family. Low living standards, blatant abuses of power and the lack of basic freedoms doesn't seem to be enough to cause any rumblings of revolution. Turkmen dictators seem to be so successful at clinging on to power for a few reasons. Firstly, their policy of neutrality and geographical isolation means they're often forgotten about on the world stage. Yes, Turkmenistan may be brutally oppressing its own people, but they aren't testing nuclear weapons, which tends to attract international attention. Meanwhile, North Korea launched ballistic missiles to carry out nuclear strikes. Finally, the regime uses a smokescreen of bizarre behavior that tends to make the rest of the world laugh instead of focus on what's going on behind the scenes. It will be interesting to see how Sadar manages his presidency. Will he follow the Turkmen playbook and develop an eccentric cult of personality? Or will he be the dictator of the future, adopting his own version of Glasnost and restructuring the state to better serve its people? Only time will tell.